Coming up on South Coast Spotlight, join us as we break from the routine and play in the street. Listen to what locals have to say in their best pirate voices and get a healthy dose of vitamin C at this year's Lemon Festival. All that and more on this episode of South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight. I'm Dominique Samario. In this program, we'll take you around the South Coast to explore what brings our community to life. In our last episode, we gave you a tour of the TVSB Community Center in preparation for our grand opening and art gallery debut. Well, the art's on the walls, so in this show, we'll show you around. But first, check out this segment where we feature a local organization who is turning one busy Santa Barbara street into the community's playground. Cabrillo Boulevard is one of Santa Barbara's busiest streets. It can be congested with traffic and not the most inviting for pedestrians. But what if you could... Ride a bike in the street, SB Open Streets. Go skate in the street, SB Open Streets. People from all around come to Santa Barbara to experience this waterfront. This is beautiful, and yet we have all these cars and a parking situation. We eliminate that component, and we basically extend the beach all the way to the hotels and the businesses along this strip. Although this concept is new to Santa Barbara, its inspiration has a long history, dating back to 1976. In Bogota, Colombia, approximately 30 years ago, they started this initiative, but it became such a phenomenon that now they close down 70 miles of street every Sunday. And so this has stemmed from that. Each community does it their own way, and it's called the Open Streets Movement. These events really are taking off all across the countries. This will be the first time that we actually close down a stretch of roadway for people to just use the street however they want. Play a game in the street, SB Open Streets. Come skip in the street, SB Open Streets. But how do you go about closing down three miles of one of Santa Barbara's most popular thoroughfares? For SB Open Streets, the key has been collaboration. A team of volunteers as well as kind of community partners have been working towards creating all the structural processes and the sponsorships to make this event at this caliber happen. Coast is the presenting organization. It's a big job. This big job to make SB Open Streets a reality took an incredible amount of community effort. But for the organizations involved, the benefits to both personal health and environmental health are well worth it. The power of these events is that it introduces people to bicycling and walking where they might not have ever done it before. We want to promote walking and biking and just show people how much fun it can be. People absolutely need to be outdoors and active and um, I think this is a way for people to go out and see what's possible and start trying new habits. It's helping people with their fitness but also reducing our carbon footprint. It's all about clean air, fresh air, celebrating car-free transportation, and, and appreciating that the street can be a place where you can, you can play and you can learn about cycling and, and walking and pogo sticking and all the various things that you can do in a street without a car. Do yoga in the street, SB Open Streets. Move your body in the street, SB Open Streets. Jump rope in the street, SB Open Streets. Although the event focuses on getting people outdoors and active while lessening the impact on the environment, the greater goal is to strengthen Santa Barbara's sense of community. Santa Barbara Open Streets is all about community. And it brings different, uh, different people that normally don't work together on projects. The physical fitness community has not been linked into the alternative transportation community. And with this event, we're seeing this great synergistic partnership between the two. Um, the arts community, the music community, also bringing them in. It really lends itself to kind of the best kind of community event where you don't have to pay any money, you don't have to really register for anything. All you have to do is come out. It's open to everyone. It's, it's open to people of all ages and all incomes. It's all free. It builds that social bond that ties a community. And those types of things create a stronger community. 
with the incredible positive feedback and effects that Open Street events have had on other communities all over the world. There is absolutely no reason not to come out to Cabrillo Boulevard on November 2nd to enjoy the open streets. You and me in the street, SB Open Streets. Please come experience it for yourself. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring your fun things to do, and let's enjoy the street together. Ahoy there, mateys. <laughs> Residents of all ages put on their best Jack Sparrow and say whatever they want to say in our next two segments for Talk Like a Pirate Day. So on International Talk Like a Pirate Day, if you could say anything to the world as a pirate, what would you say? Arg! 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 What else? I'd I'd be saying, watch your booty, watch your booty, giving away your loot to those who need it. That's Aye. right. And as pirates, steal from the rich and give to the poor. Or give to me. Uh, are you poor? Very poor. I'm a uh, pirate. Uh, love. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. One of the best things about piracy is... camera, am I? What's it? Yeah, you're on hidden camera. It's over there. Oh, is it? No, it's over there. So, if you could say anything on Talk Like a Pirate Day, as a pirate, what would you say? I'd say pirates rock. Pirates rock! <laughs> Let's hear yours. Talk Like a Pirate. Very good. What other letters, letters do you know? I know all 24 letters in the alphabet. But I all don't 24! Know, and I don't know why. <laughs> Well, now you know me, and we'll figure out why over dinner. Do you have anything you'd like to say to Santa Barbara? Oh, chips ahoy. Chips ahoy? Yeah. That'd be my favorite cookie. You got any? No, I wish. I'm sorry. Pirates are good. Pirates are good. Do you know today's International Talk Like a Pirate Day, don't you? Really? It no. is. I did not know that. And the beauty of it is, is it's a day of celebrating free speech. Great, why don't you run for city council? We need somebody like you. I have it because you know what? I would be honest. I will come to the podium and say, I will lie to you, I will cheat you, and I will do it in classic pirate tradition, but I will be honest about lying and cheating you. Hell. I think I've got it in the bag. What do you think? How you doing, mate? How are you doing? Can you give me a high five? Give me a high five, mate. Yeah, do it like you mean it. Ah. Like you mean it, lad. Scare me. Ah, I'm kind of scared, but you know why? You're redheaded. Redheaded's terrify me. Shiver me timbers. What would you say? I don't know. <laughs> All right, how about always walk the plank in good shoes? Free all the pirates. To a half a pint and to the heads of them all. Let's drink together and down us all. Amen, brother. International. What pirate are doing? Talk like a pirate. Talk like a pirate. <laughs> Talk like a pirate. <laughs> Here's to you, man. Arr, happy pirate day. Arr. Arr. Did she punch you in the nose, mate? Yes. She, did you? No. Why not? I should have. It, it was it. Davy Chong. Wait, do you guys dress like, up like this every day or just today? <laughs> yeah, why? Dead men tell no tale. So speak while you're alive. <laughs> speak while you can, mate. Speak while you can. I'm scared. Of what? You. Thank you. See. You're actually going to be on TV. What? Oh. Oh my god. I'm the Pillsbury, oh boy. <laughs> but what is normal? You know, like, like we're all different. We're all weird, I think. You know, I think we all can have that in us. On International Talk Like a Pirate Day, you've got anything more to tell the world as a pirate? It's a National Pirate Day. Talk like a pirate. Just be, arr. Just go. Go for it. Go, go for, for it. it. Be you and just... You want to be a pirate? Be a pirate. Rum for the tourists. Rum for the terrorists. No rum for terrorists. No, only for tourists. Only for terrorists. You're confusing the hell out of me, love. <laughs> you never let me have any rum anyway. It's because you're a bloody terrorist. Aye, aye, mate. Our UCSB is the best university, mateys. So, while you're battling me, crewmate, what have you got to say to the world on Talk Like a Pirate Day? Arr. We're only British pirates. No, we're sort of a mishmash of everything nasty from Europe. No. <laughs> Can't you tell by the smell? Pirate day. I don't know. Can you talk like a pirate? A part? Pirate. Pirate? Pirate. I already get it. Jack? Sort of. Say R. 
Oh. Okay, say a vast me hearties. A vast me hearty. Very good. <laughs> say shiver me timbers. Shiver me timbers. Very good. <laughs> say say walk the plank. Walk the plank. Very good. Now say happy talk like a pirate day. Excuse me, kind fellow. I'm going to commandeer your boat because I am an outlaw of the seas. Ooh, a proper no. gentleman pirate. Go sweep the poop deck for me, sir. You want me to sweep the poop deck? Yeah. Here, take the gun, mate. Point it at the camera. Say, raise me bedtime, Mom. <laughs> that didn't sound like raise me bedtime, Mom. I know, that sounded like give me more dessert. My name be Captain Thunderplunder, and I am here at the Galita Library. Today, we are celebrating International Talk Like a Pirate Day. Today, young pirates can come to the library and get their pirate names. They can read pirate books, and they can take their picture as a pirate. We also have pirate crafts here today at the Galita Library. So, come down to the Galita Library, and we'll make you walk the plank. Arr, I like reading at the library and making my mom walk the plank. Oh, thank you. Ahoy, matey! Ahoy, matey! Arr. Ahoy, matey! Ahoy, matey! Ahoy, matey! Make it quick, or they're gonna make me walk the plank! Ahoy, mateys! Arr! <laughs> One of our walls is filled with a different kind of artwork. Photos from our very own Santa Barbara Teen News Network, or as we like to call it, SBTNN. Well, you're probably aware that hunger is an issue on the South Coast, but you might be surprised to learn that many of those affected are children. In our next segment, find out what local groups are doing to change this. To many of us, the thought of someone going hungry brings to mind an image of a cardboard sign. But the truth behind those suffering from hunger goes much deeper than you might think. And when those depths begin to reach our children, swift action must be taken. In Santa Barbara, community members, politicians, and even celebrities are taking a stand against hunger in a countywide effort to eliminate it once and for all. Hunger doesn't have only one face or stereotype. Its victims can be anyone living anywhere. The first thing we need to do is recognize that we have a, a hunger problem. Hunger is typically a symptom of something else that's going on, and that, that something else is food insecurity. Many people are unaware of the widespread nature of food insecurity, but people with full-time jobs, families raising children, and even homeowners are going hungry every day. Which means that families aren't sure where their next meal is coming from. So often at the end of the month, a lot of families will get into that situation where the money they have available to food is much less they've paid all their other bills, and so their diet really suffers. And children suffer inordinately as a result of that. There are many people in our community who are hungry, and a, a good proportion of those are children. Currently in our county, 25,000 kids are receiving free or reduced meals every school day, but 84% of those kids don't receive any sort of meal assistance over the summer. For children, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, allowing the brain to retain important information while attending school. Without proper nutrition, kids have trouble focusing during a lesson, which can lead to falling behind their peers. A child growing up without the right nutrition is not able to be a productive member of society. A lot of people I, I know don't really see this. It's kind of a hidden 
uh, uh, problem, and it affects us all. The medical studies have shown you really need a, a very healthy breakfast to be able to study and concentrate at school. Our kids, you know, it's, um, they're our future. They're, uh, they're the whole thing. I've often thought that you know, the, the health of our children can be a wonderful compass to find out if our society is on track. You know, if our kids are doing well, then we were doing pretty well as a society. Addressing the lack of stable food sources is no small challenge. It takes many contributors. The need for action may be unnoticed by some, but many agencies, public figures, and volunteers are diligently working to not only increase awareness, but to stomp out the issue of hunger in Santa Barbara County altogether. One of these organizations is Food Bank of Santa Barbara. In its 30-year history, they have gone from distributing 100,000 pounds of food annually to nearly 11 million pounds in 2012. The Food Bank, like many other nonprofits, started with just a group of concerned citizens sitting around a table saying, what can we do to help with emergency food requirements in Santa Barbara County? And at that time, which was in the 80s, there was a lot of government food available which could be distributed and there was also a lot of wasted food within the grocery distribution network. So food banks were a, a sort of a no-brainer in terms of being that middleman who could step in there and safely source and store food and then distribute it out to member agencies. For Academy Award winning actor Jeff Bridges, the issue of world hunger has long been on his heart. But in the 1990s, when U.S. government policies regarding hunger assistance began to collapse, he devoted his efforts to feeding America. When I got involved in uh, the hunger issue was back in the um, early 80s, and hunger had pretty much been handled here in our country. But then about, oh, I guess about 20 years ago, when some of our safety nets started to get holes in them and they weren't uh, properly funded, I shifted my attention to hunger here at home. Solving the hunger issue is more than just providing food to those in need. One very important effort in particular is the need to educate parents and their children on the types of food that are healthy and nutritious to establish lifelong good eating habits. The importance of knowing uh, what foods are good for us and for our children. It's not just food itself, but it's the right kinds of food. Children, of course, they want to pick up the, the prepared foods, the snack foods, the, the empty calories. We have a series of programs called Feed the Future, which starts at the preschool level and then works up through until high school. And it really equips um, young people with the abilities to look after themselves with food, how to cook, how to shop, and really just make the best advantage of all the excellent fresh produce that we have here in Santa Barbara County. Beyond just feeding kids this summer with a nice, healthy, well-balanced, nutritious meal, we're also trying to promote kids' outdoor activities, um, garden education, nutrition education, as much activity as we can encourage during the summer because it really is a critical time of brain and muscle development and we want to encourage kids to use that time as much as they can. One unique program making an impactful contribution to both promoting a nutritious diet and helping to eliminate hunger is Food Bank of Santa Barbara's Picnic in the Park which distributes approximately 35,000 free meals to children during the summer. Picnic in the Park was formulated as being what is called an open program, which means that it's in a park, it's freely available for any child under the age of 18 to come and access it. There's no eligibility rules, there's no papers you got to fill out, you just have to show up at these different sites where you can get meals. This is a free summer lunch program for kids all summer long, Monday through Friday um, at parks all over the county. We've got actually 17 different locations this year. Picnic in the Park is, is a vital program really because a lot of children depend on free and reduced lunches from school and some get breakfast as well during the school year. That's great during the year but in the summer those meals go away. Children's bodies and their brains still have to grow during that period so there's a real necessity for someone to be able to step in and make sure that children continue to get that nutrition during the summer. Even with these thriving outreach programs and an effort for more robust government policies related to hunger, the need is still great. But 
with community support and volunteers to sustain current efforts and create new initiatives, ultimately, we can eliminate the need for these programs altogether. Yeah, that's fine. The food bank has shifted our way of operating. We now have what is called a community leadership model. And that means that we rely directly on members of the public to actually run programs and to be really involved in how the food bank operates. You can get involved in the most basic level in terms of helping in a warehouse or picking up food or sorting food, but it can really extend widely out to being involved in teaching in our programs. But also we love when people come in and are able to use their skills and experience for us. It's really a rewarding experience to participate in this program. Um, and I know that our volunteers couldn't agree more. We would encourage you to take a peek on our website and you'll see that there are volunteer coordinators north and south county. And we want to know what you are good at doing and what you are interested in doing. And then we try and find a match with something that will really help um, our children and clients in the community. What's really needed is kind of what took place tonight here in this room, this community spirit, and uh, you know, realizing that we're all interconnected, we're all in this together. Only thing I can say is we can do better, and we will, when folks like you across the country make us. So what do you do when life gives you lemons? Throw a lemon festival! Join us for our next segment where we find out why the Goleta Valley likes to zest it up each year with its annual festival. Every local knows about the Goleta Lemon Festival, but why celebrate it in the first place? Well, it started over 120 years ago when Sherman P. Stowe, one of Santa Barbara's first residents, planted over 600 acres of lemon trees. Due to the city's year-round climate, the orchard quickly flourished along with Goleta's economy. Now let's see what the city has to say about our lemons this year. I uh, came here for lemon-related foodstuffs. Now food isn't the only thing catered at the festival. There are carnival rides, face painters, and live music too. We sell so many of Anna's Bakery's lemon meringue pies, lemon bars, and Baccara tarts. The, the lemon meringue pie that we serve here is delicious. It's just the right amount of creamy with the meringue on top, and on a hot day, it sort of goes down cool. We're here going to try one of our new lemon funnel cakes with lemon meringue. Before we put the powdered sugar on it, we squirt it with the lemon concentrate, and to top it off, we put wet cream and a freshly cut lemon on top of it. A lemon squeeze crepe, which is a butter and sugar with a fresh lemon squeezed over it, which is really popular. My favorite beer is what everybody loves to buy, and that is a great lemon beer. We are selling lemonade at the Lemon Festival, and actually my club has been doing this for over 20 years. The event is hosted by the Goleta Valley Chamber of Commerce with help from volunteers, high schools, junior highs, and community groups. Today at the Lemon Festival, we were asked to come out and uh, demonstrate some of the equipment that we have available for our department SWAT team. What you see is uh, our department's armored vehicle. It's called a bear. Uh, along with some of our personal protective equipment, uh, heavy vests, uh, some of the tools that we use for high-risk situations. Uh, the bear itself we take with us on all of our call-outs generally. It's a ballistic protection for the team, for the ability to do any evacuations uh, or get close to a target location during a high-risk warrant service or a barricaded gunman. My favorite part of these types of events is having the little kids come up and get a chance to take a look get to see things they may only see from a distance or on deployments when we don't really have a time to answer questions. Uh, obviously here it's all about letting kids get up close and personal, touch the truck, ask questions about the equipment, sort of dispel some of the things they may have learned from TV and the movies and explain the realities of what we do. I'm with the Rotary Club of Goleta Noontime. We sponsor the Goleta Teen of the Year Community Awards, uh, Community Service Award Program, where we honor uh, teens, seniors in high school for their past community service. And we have them work with us in this program. And uh, today we're here to sell cotton candy at the Lemon Festival and earn some of the scholarships and money that we're going to be giving to the Goleta Teen of the Year finalists and Goleta Teen of the Year. With all the focus around lemons, 
let us not forget to thank Sherman P. Stowe for his bright idea of planting those lemon trees and allowing us to celebrate each year with a little bit of fun. I'm a lemon and you're watching TVSV. You know how they say the pot of gold is found at the end of the rainbow. Well, then you should follow us into our next story about the recently restored chromatic gate. What weighs 12.5 tons, stands 21 feet tall, and is now more vibrant and colorful than ever before? It's kind of a gateway to the city. It's great. It looks fantastic. It can stay vibrant for many, many years to come. You may have passed by the chromatic gate multiple times on Cabrillo Boulevard. For years, the art sculpture was gaining rust and was in desperate need of restoration. These negative changes did not go unnoticed by the community. We were lamenting how horrible the chromatic gate looked. And so we started talking to the people at the Arts Fund, which is a private nonprofit in Santa Barbara, and they told us the history of the chromatic gate. The statue by Herbert Byer has faded over the years, and Herbert Byer is known for his color, and it was a little dismaying to everyone in town that it was looking so poorly. Herbert Byer, a famous artist that studied under Kadinsky, designed the chromatic gate. He spent the last 10 years of his life living in Santa Barbara before he passed away in 1985. It was 22 years ago, in 1991, when Paul Mills, the longest serving art director in Santa Barbara, brought the chromatic gate to Santa Barbara's East Beach. At the recent unveiling of the renovated sculpture, Paul Mills's children reflected on what this day would have meant to him. I, I was trying to think what he would have really felt like today. And I think that uh, just as a person, Paul Mills would be quite emotional and very moved by what you've done. He'd just simply be so grateful, so thankful, so relieved and so touched that you cared and that you could save the chromatic gate when he couldn't. While Paul Mills and Herbert Byer are no longer here, the chromatic gate lives on fully restored and to be maintained for years to come. But this process was not an easy task. It took a lot of hard work and community effort. A few years ago, there was no money to restore this chromatic gate. And so uh, people like Patty to Dominic and the Arts Commission really searched far and wide and, and there were many community partners that came together. We were promised if we raised $48,000 that the gate could be restored. In 90 days, we raised over $60,000, and all told, we raised over $78,000 for the restoration and the permanent maintenance of this gate. While raising the money took an enormous amount of effort, some would say that the actual restoration of the sculpture was an even more difficult task. There was much to do in order to achieve the exquisite result. Here's a little taste. Get permits, set up scaffolding, porta potties, fencing, scrape lichen, dirt, and moss off the top of the sculpture, sand down the top coat of the sculpture, discover that there was more rust and metal damage than early inspections revealed, and repair that by more sanding, grinding, sandblasting. Fill in the damage, smooth and sand it again. Clean every inch of the sculpture again with acetone to remove dust and residue. Spray three coats of primer onto the surface of the sculpture to ensure a long-lasting surface of paint to adhere to. Now, sand it again. Fill in any imperfections. Sand it one more time and clean it one more time. And this was before the painting even began. After all of the effort from both the restoration team and the community, the finished product looks fantastic. And Paul Mills's children believe that their father would be very pleased. It's moments like today that meant so much to my dad and my mom. Moments when the boldness and vibrancy, the bravery and intelligence of contemporary art could bring very different people together and challenge them, please them, make them think and discuss and feel. And most dearly, they knew that these moments needed a lot of donors who really believed and really cared. The gate says that art is for everyone. And the gate marks a space that's beyond profit or obvious use that's dedicated to the idea that art can bring life and possibility to hearts and minds. The gate looks refreshed and vibrant and also reflects the unity and strength of the Santa Barbara community. 
not only was a historical work of art restored, but a beautiful meeting place for residents and visitors was recreated. A place that frames all of the life and natural beauty that surround it. Recently, TVSB had a tail wagging good time at the Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens with some lovable furry friends. In our next segment, join us for one pet stop you don't want to miss. If you're looking for a beautiful place to hike and you happen to enjoy taking your best doggy friend with you, the Trails and Tails event at Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens is a place for you. Because it promotes that the Santa Barbara Botanic Garden is always dog friendly. It gets local vendors that are canine friendly to a centralized area. It also supports all of our horticultural and conservation and research programs at the garden. All the proceeds raised will go directly to the garden's mission. And it keeps you and your dog healthy by walking around five easy walking trails. We all have tricks and games we like to play with our pooch. These are some stories from local dog owners on their favorites. My favorite thing about Bogart is also my least favorite thing about Bogart, which is his stubbornness. This one right here will roll over immediately as soon as you get close to her just to get her belly rubbed. And this one will dig underneath the covers so that she, she can be covered. If you're snuggling on the couch, she'll go to whoever has the covers. I like how he greets us. He just runs up very exuberant, jumps up on this little wall, and he just, just can't wait to say hi. So he goes and gets the paper for us. He can do speak. I can pretend to shoot him and he can play dead. He can do shake, high five. Choppy loves to run and he loves sea kelp vessels and his code word is mash it up. And mash it up means take the leaf or the flower or anything and have fun with it. He's uh, really fun. He plays with his two cats at home. I love how mellow she is. She'll just lay by my feet for hours on end and then when we go to the beach she just bursts with energy and runs. William, come front. Finish. Down. Dead dog. Show them a dead dog. Can dead dog roll over? Can you roll over? Sometimes we need a fun and safe place to care for our dogs while we're away. Camp Canine offers many services for such a situation. We have doggy daycare, grooming, training, um, uh, full spa services, and overnight lodging. It's a good spot for dogs to come that just have a great time. They're safe. They're um, divided into appropriate play groups. We keep the small dogs and the big dogs separate. Um, nice place to leave your dogs if you have to go run some errands or you're going out of town. You know that they're going to have a blast. They pull their owners in the door. Santa Barbara is well known for being dog friendly. Here are some dog owners favorite places to take their pups. Probably Shoreline Park or the Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens. The beach. He likes to go to the um, Earl Warren Showgrounds when they have a dog show there. We love taking her to the beach, especially in Summerland at Loon Point. We just love taking her to play fetch on the sand and the water. We like going to the dog park. Most of the time he just likes going and annoying all the dogs. The meal for four and the winner is... It's not an issue of my favorite place, it's their favorite place. They have an addiction called Henry's Beach and they have to go there every single day. Uh, we like to take Wally to uh, Devro. My favorite place is in my own neighborhood because I bicycle with her. I can't pedal as fast as she can run, so it's really fun for both of us. I actually bring him here to the Santa Barbara B Botanic Garden. Trails and Tales is more than just about having fun with your dog. It's a place where you can rescue one and bring them to a good home. Anyone who's thinking about getting a dog for their home or their family or for companionship, to adopt a dog, and if they're even in a position to adopt a senior dog, there are a lot of senior dogs that are unfortunately being left in empty houses and abandoned because people are losing their homes. And so it would be great if people could reach out for more senior adoptions. So head on out to the Trails and Tales event at Santa Barbara Botanic Gardens. Well, that does it for this episode of South Coast Spotlight. Until the next time, come on down to TVSB and check out the art for yourself. And make sure to continue watching where we feature the arts, culture, and community that make up the South Coast. If you have an idea for a segment, email us at info at tvsb.tv. Thanks for watching, and until next time, get out and enjoy your South Coast.